Greetings, this is James Gillen with As You Wish Talk Radio on the BBS Network. We've got a great show. We've had some pretty good panels up here. We had uh, quite a lineup uh, on the last show, so we have another great lineup here, and we're doing another uh, little mini-conference with uh, Peter Slattery and Sorita Antaria, and uh, it's, uh, it's been a lot of amazing information, but what I really wanted to cover today is some of the things that, that have been happening here. It is just phenomenal what's been happening this weekend and actually the last weekend as well. But it's really stepped up even more this weekend, which is interesting. And sometimes when we get a really uh, cohesive group here, uh, you know, a smaller group, a cohesive group, we get even more sightings to come down lower and closer and it's more of an intimate setting. So. That seems to be the case this time because we're having some just phenomenal uh, sightings. We're actually getting them on film, and we got some just just phenomenal uh, things on film last night. It was funny because after the workshop, I looked outside, and it was just socked in, total cloudy. I mean, it, there was no clear spots at all. And, uh, you know, I went inside for a little while, and I came right back out again, and all of a sudden the whole sky was clear and a big hole opened up. And then the ships just kept coming and coming and coming. But uh, uh, it was one after another after another. We got doubles. We got power-ups. We got uh, tree less, I mean, half treetop level ships coming in, uh, you know, lower than the trees. I mean, it was half treetop level. So uh, undeniable. You know, I don't see how anybody can even question this kind of footage anymore when you've got this many witnesses and you've got multiple cameras and everything else going on. But uh, tonight I wanted to just bring on some of the people that were here during these events that got to see the, the ships and, and uh, kind of what went down here. And, and it's not, you know, this isn't just something far off in the distance, like some light, you know, way off in the distance somewhere. I mean, these are in your face and doing things that, are, that bend our physics and they're far beyond any physics we know of. So on that note, I'm going to turn the... Uh, uh, microphone over. I think I'll go up first with Albert so he can go first and talk about some of the sightings that he's had. So Albert, what's some of the most important sightings that you think you've had? So uh, about, I don't know, five nights ago now, um, Barry here and I were out in Pleiadian Circle, probably about 3 a.m. and uh, just, you know, seeing what's going on out there. And in the western sky, what we thought initially was either a planet or a really uh, vibrant star um, seemed to be shifting and kind of moving very uh, different than what a star or planet does. So as we kind of zoned in on, on what we found out was not a star, some kind of ship, it began to morph and dance around and split into five and just getting hit with this kind of blissed out feeling, at least for me, that was uh, a big part of it, is the sensation going along with the sighting. And we're sitting there kind of almost in disbelief and laughing um, as we're watching this thing change colors and split into five and and do the dance that it was doing. And it, it's, it was uh, right above one of the foothills here, and uh, it starts to descend a bit. And it starts to descend into the mountain and starts projecting through the mountain. And as I'm saying it and recounting it, it sounds even more insane than, than it looked. But it was projecting through the mountain. And it, it, it ascended a bit above the foothill and went back down and still was projecting light through the mountain. So we're kind of sitting there tripping out over that. and. The mountain itself seems to sort of turn gelatinous almost. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't constant anymore. Um, and it was certainly defying the laws of physics as we know it. And um, it was, yeah, it was quite the sighting. Um, a lot happens here and there's uh, a lot of contact that happens here. There's a lot of sightings that happen here, but this one was, uh, very interactive and and like I said, the feeling that went with it um, just kind of affirmed what we were seeing was not military, it was not a star, it was not a planet, it was I would say is probably um, 
um, maybe a Merkaba or a, a, a bunch of beings working <coughs> together to create this form. Um, yeah, I'll pass it over to Barry and tell you a little more about it. All right, so uh, it's Albert Lagrange, is that, <laughs> and uh, his side, he's one of the, the people that assist us here at the ranch, and so a lot of the the helpers here, the volunteers at the ranch are having just amazing experiences here, and so we wanted to bring him on because he's going to validate what Barry's about ready to tell you too, and when you have multiple witnesses seeing the same thing, it just gives it a lot more credibility. So I know Barry can add some some hyperdimensional physics in there or something to to the to the pot. So uh, this is Barry Littleton. Uh, thank you. Um, boy, I'm trying to think here. I'm watching Albert get exciting just talking about it because it uh, was quite the experience. You know, I've been having physical experiences most of my life, and I've never seen anything <laughs> quite like what I saw a couple of days ago. Um, when we see this ship, it's above the tree line. It's an evergreen that we can kind of use as a measurement device. Um, when it starts splitting and morphing into five, then back into one, then elongating, then going vertical, <coughs> excuse me, um, I've never seen anything quite like that. And we have actually something in Merkaba that's called uh, bipyramidal Merkaba and tripyramidal Merkabas. And I've seen that when ships appear to be one, go to three, then back. But this was, this was quite a bit different. It was splitting into five and then morphing back. And when it starts descending, and we can use this evergreen tree as kind of a marker, as it begins descending, uh, it goes down below the tree line, like Albert had said, but then it became quickly visible again. So what I'm saying is it was visible through the mountain to a point of where I was rubbing my eyes and readjusting to make sure it wasn't, uh, it didn't descend in front of the mountain and then power back up and that was giving me that illusion, but it wasn't. And you could see that as it would rise above the tree line, then go back down midways into the mountain, still shining, you could see it. And when it finally descended lower, it, would, it disappeared. Something noteworthy of when it first started descending into the mountain, we could see an odd um, type of mist or fog towards the top of the mountain, which implies to me something they call it an orgone field, orgone energy. Um, I was left, uh, it kind of pushed me to the brink. I got a little dehydrated and within like, 20 minutes or whatever it was. Um, part of it is I'm aware of the quantum principle, quantum, the hologram principle, holographic principle, but there's something else called the quantum hologram that's been discovered by uh, Dr. Rudy Shields and others from the University of Berkeley, I believe. Uh, this pushed this to the brink, okay? And I would say that this wasn't a government deal we were seeing based on the morphing of the, sh the ship itself and the holographic projection of the entire mountain. We're set there afterwards and during the daytime looking at this uh, mountain range that I believe is called Sleeping Beauty, right? Uh, well, yeah, Sleeping, Be uh, Sleeping Beauty is on one side and then Flat Top is the, I think I called it Flathead yesterday, but it's called Flat Top Mountain is the one that, that it descended down behind. Wow, I, <laughs> yeah, it descended there and um, I, and I'm, I'm forced to look at this and say, how much of this mountain is not real? How much of it is a, is a holographic illusion? I mean, I, like I say, as a lifetime experiencer, uh, that really kind of pushed me to the brink. It's one thing to talk about the technology, to talk about the science, but Lord knows an entirely different <laughs> to see it, mm -hmm. especially in that way. So that kind of is what happened there. Yeah. Um, telepathy came with it, but uh, was kind of hard to lock in on. I wanted to, yeah, you had some other experiences here. You had some kind of anomalous uh, things with Bigfoot. We have a resident <laughs> Bigfoot here that likes to terrorize people every now and then, just in a good way, just have fun with people. But uh, I know you had a vision, and then somebody else, I think it was one of Laura Eisenhower's uh, kids came up, and her sons, and came up and said, wow, I just had a vision of this uh, kind of a silver or gray-haired Bigfoot, an elder. And... Uh, and you know, had he saw this elder, I guess, and then you had that vision ahead of time that you're going to meet this elder. So I'd love to hear that story about the, the you know, Bigfoot experience. I'd say I'm going to go back to Kansas in two days, and <laughs> they're going to say you went up in the mountains and lost your mind. <laughs> um, actually, you know, there's another night I saw ships also, but this is different. Now, three weeks prior to coming on this property, I kept getting the feeling I would maybe encounter a Sasquatch. More to that, an albino Sasquatch. And it, 
it just, it, it hounded me the whole way out here. I get here, I get put in a cabin kind of in the back of the property, a nice one, but uh, <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, found, I found a nice little log back there to meditate on and kind of it's facing a pond that's uh, looking towards the back 40 is what it's called here. So uh, that's pretty good. I meditated there twice. The third time, uh, I noticed that there is a large tree that's right in my field of vision, broken and placed between um, another stack of uh, trees, all right? So that I look, keep looking at it, and it's so odd looking because the tree isn't dying, all right? And if you look at where it's broken, <sighs> it's about eight feet up. So anyone that would push that over would have to be around eight feet tall, all right, with longer arms. So I just try to dismiss that and saying, okay, I'm seeing UFOs again. I'm, I'm just freaking out, you know. Uh, the next day, two days later, the second part of this tree is broken in a similar fashion right next to the other piece and laid similar. You can see them right there, and it's uh, you can see the fresh bark on there. That's when I start becoming a little bit alarmed. And on fact, uh, the fact that every time I'm down there, <laughs> I feel like I'm being watched. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot on this property. I feel like somebody's watching me. So um, – I tried to kind of dismiss this. I talked about it a little. Um, my friend Peter Maxwell Slatter and I went to get some ice. I had previously dumped out the cooler out there. And uh, there's some rocks and things around, but they were fine. I come back uh, with the ice, and <laughs> there's, there's a large rectangular rock placed in front of the doormat, right in front of the door. Now, it's really dusk out. It's almost nightfall. Just a little bit later, and I would have probably tripped on it and <laughs> broke my neck. But um, it uh, was a very odd rectangular rock that actually stood up vertically. So I kind of tossed it to the side, and I kept thinking, I didn't knock the rocks around enough to leave something like that. So I went back up, told Peter, he said, let's go look at it. We go down to look at this rectangular rock, and it's gone. <laughs> um, all the other, some rocks look similar to it, but it definitely was not this one. So I asked James about it, and he said one of the uh, calling cards of the Sasquatch is to put uh, rocks or broken branches in front of somebody's door. Um, so I'm basically pretty, pretty much freaking out by then. You know? um, not in a bad way. I wanted to have an encounter, and I felt I might. But the truth is, albino or not, if somebody steps out of the bushes uh, about 10 feet tall, I'm going to freak out, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run no matter how spiritual I claim to be. So I kind of stopped and uh, walking down to the uh, cabin one night did a mind speak, a telep telepathy to this albino Sasquatch because uh, James had mentioned that there was one on the property. So I kind of just said, I'm sorry, but if you pop out on me, I'm, I'm going to freak. And uh, I get a message back probably 15 minutes later just before I fall asleep, distinctively saying telepathy is easier and you may address me as elder. And then the telepathy contact ceased at that point. But it was anybody that deals with telepathy, when it comes through, it's very, very vivid, very clear, especially from the human level. So that's kind of what happened to me. And I have two days left here, and I'm still freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You know, um, we actually did some, some divination stuff earlier to find out his name. And I can't remember his name. Do you remember his name? Edna, E-D-A, E-D-A. Or was it E-D-A or E-D? E-D-A. No, oh, yeah, it was Ida, and so we it was his name was Ida, and, and so we asked, well, what does that what does Ida mean? And they said elder, you know, which was quite interesting. So, so they they you know he's like a major elder. When I met the same uh, Sasquatch, he had two uh, apprentices with him, and they were probably you know they were younger, but they were still almost eight feet tall, and. Uh, we have a, a juvenile Bigfoot that likes to play pranks over here. He just shows up now and then and just appears and disappears. But Clyde Lewis with Ground Zero Radio was here. And uh, Delaki's his name. And he came running right up to him, skidded, stopped right in front of him, smiled at him, turned around and ran off through the bushes and through the trees there in, in the orchard. So now the interesting thing about that was I saw him leaving uh, he had two other witnesses, but Clyde goes, I'm not, I'm not going public. Nobody will believe me. You know, he just really freaked him out for a little while. And then when I brought the pictures of the footprints and things like that, he did decide to go forward and talk about this. So, you know, they are here. Uh, if you rise to the occasion and you d develop yourself spiritually, if you send them love, 
and joy and, and you're service oriented, you're going to have a contact. They'll come and find you. But if you're in that mode of prove it to me, show me, uh, if you're in the ego, they, they just, you know, they decide that the Native Americans have a saying here. If you go out searching for Bigfoot or a Sasquatch, you'll never find him. But if he wants to find you, he will. You know, so and and so you can't go at it with the way most people are going at it. I mean, the, the Bigfoot hunters and all the other stuff that, you know, if you don't have a spiritual component to that, it's like you're never going to see these guys. You're never going to find them. We are so loud in the forest and so unconscious. And uh, it, it's just amazing to think that we're going to go out there and and find this this being that actually is totally at one with nature that can shape shift that can dematerialize and uh uh and we're going to go tromping through the forest and get a photo you know um you're not going to get anything unless you make peace with bigfoot and even then when you're of that consciousness you're not going to be exposing it and uh you know trespassing into its world and its territory so you're you know you're going to respect that connection and respect that that meeting so you know, we have to change our mindset. Same thing with ETs. You know, if you want to have a contact with a benevolent being, the, the mind in which you seek is the mind in which you connect. So if you're in it for the wrong reasons and you're unconscious and you want to go out there and have an experience, you may have an experience. You know, it might be a gray, might involve a probe, you know, or, or something else, but, uh, you know, a reptilian or something. It may not be a really good experience, but if you make peace with the benevolent ones, then things are totally different. And actually you'll get protection from the benevolent ones as well. So it is. The, the consciousness is so important to, to you know, factor into this. So I'm going to shift gears over here and, and go over to Salrita Antaria. And she can talk about some of her experiences here. And um, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about uh, some of the work you do with the the benevolent ETs and the uh, even some of the star language things and everything else. But before that, let's just go ahead and get uh, some of your experiences. I'd love yeah. to hear your take on what happened out in the Skywatch field and some of the other things. So just over the the last um, the last week, there's just been so many sightings. It's just been crazy busy skies here. Last night was especially good with the group that we've got uh, for the workshop this weekend. <laughs> I can see someone raising their hands up. Um, it's just been a lot of fun out on the field. Lots of lights. They're coming in low. We've got flashes, um, which sound a bit rude, but they're not. They're ships <laughs> that are flashing lights at us. Um, yeah, all sorts of different things. They're coming in together. They're crossing paths. Sometimes you've got, you know, three, four um, sometimes five crafts in the sky at the one time. And it's like, which one do you film? You've got yeah. James and Pete filming going, which one are you on? Which one are you on? And yeah. they eventually cross paths. Um, it, it's fun. It's kind of like everyone's like looking to the sky, seeing who's going to spot something first. Uh, we've got the lasers out, um, you know, interacting, sort of flashing on and off at the craft. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's also not just about the craft here. There's a lot of interactions you know, amongst the elemental kingdom, amongst the, the orbs, um, you know, even just interacting with Mother Earth here and taking the time to connect with her. There's so many different forms of contact out here. It's just crazy. Um, it really feels like a beautiful place to come home. I love it every time we come here. Um, I stay up way too late because I don't want to miss out on any of the action. Um, I'm just trying to think what else we've done. We, we've just had so much fun connecting with other like-minded people too and spending time with yourself, James, and um, with Ashley and with Joseph and everyone else. It's just been a really, really fun time. Um, and we're going in two days and it's, I think we've been here for almost two weeks or a little bit over and it's just gone so fast. Mm -hmm. um, some of the stuff that Pete and I have been doing with the workshop here and with the conference is talking about um, ET contact, ET communication and how that's possible and what to do to kind of get into that heart space and into that mindset. And what I really am fascinated by is uh, connecting the psychic senses and how if we uh, can live in two realities or awaken in the subconscious or the dream state, how ET contact becomes easier on the sense of um, a telepathic or a spiritual level and how we're kind of tuning our own inner frequencies to those of the ETs. So it's like we're coming into alignment with that which we think. 
Um, so we've been doing a few meditations, learning about the acupuncture points related to the psychic senses. Um, some of this information is in my book, Soul Star, which is available on my website. So we've been doing a little bit of that. Um, we've been showing a lot of our footage from Australia, um, and Pete's also been showing some of his footage from last year at the ranch. Um, a lot of our stuff from Australia seems to be daytime sightings. We're getting a lot of Pleiadian light ships, which are like Merkabahs, so the being being inside its field. And if you look closely at some of the pictures that we've got, you can actually see the being inside there. Some of them even sitting cross-legged, uh, cross uh, flying in the sky, what appears to be like pearls of light. Um, but yeah, that's mainly the Pleiadian contacts that we've been uh, interacting with. We do have sketches and things of what the beings look like too. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking forward to how much this is going to evolve and change when we come back next year and, mm -hmm. you know, how contact's going to evolve because it does, it's an ever changing thing. Um, it's never kind of stationary and it comes when you least expect it. It's just about having your heart in the right place, having the right intention, you know, trying to, to work with and release ego as much as we can and really just do our best in the world. All right. Thank you so much. It's always important to get a female perspective on things and, you know, bring it bring it back into the heart because that's what it's all about. And uh, I can't think of another more heart centered person than Peter Slattery here. So we're going to have him pop in and talk about some of his experiences here and, and what he's been up to lately. Hey, cheers, man. And uh, first of all, thank you for your hospitality and having us and uh Ashley and Joseph and the crew here, all your help and everything you guys do is really appreciated. Um, it's been crazy, actually. I think it might have been the first day or the second day I was here. Remember I told you I saw a flying saucer come over, to, like broad daylight. It was going over here, actually. By the time I got the camera out, because I got it always on my side, it, it completely it imploded or blinked out. I just don't know, but... That happened and uh, there was the other, uh, I think a night or two after that, I think I told you I was, I woke up at about two in the morning and there was something angelic, it's, it was really high up in terms of just distance in terms of density from myself and intelligence that it was just, it was like an arc open up in the room but it projected a shadow on the wall as well so there was that stuff go on and I, it's almost like I just woke up the next day but I was awake at the time when that happened, it's just don't know what happened after that, but the amount of sightings, um, interactions going on here on another level is just crazy. Um, I've seen some of the stuff that Barry's gone through in terms of the branches he was talking about. We've had multiple sightings together, so I've was, I was seen all that when he was showing me the branches. Um, you know, doing the, the clearings and all that sort of stuff and um, getting together, doing meditations and all that stuff. You know, the energies here are just built like a, it's a grid here where... The, the setup here allows for the energies to come through. So there's uh, been a hell of a lot going on and we went up to Yelm for a couple of days as well and um, back down here again and it's just been an awesome couple of weeks. The conference was absolutely fantastic and all the people that attended and that spoke and um, this weekend we seem to have a, a, a quite small, awesome group which is really good because the energy is just set up perfect for contact when, when you've got it like that and everyone's got the proper intent. So, you know, last night proved that in terms of all the footage we got last night and the contact that went on and um, you bring in the beans before we did so as well, which just, you know, again, sets up the energy. So, yeah, it's been a pretty intense couple of weeks and I'm going to miss America, as I say. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to move here one day. I absolutely love it, especially this, this part of the country. The people are so nice and um, the energy here is absolutely beautiful. But, uh, yeah, I guess I'm just sort of setting myself up before I get back in terms of, you know, maybe writing a couple more books. Shiji's coming through and said there's some more more work to do, but I've just got to delete some of the data in my brain to fit in the new data that's coming in <laughs> because it's just I'm trying to understand it, I guess. But, uh yeah, anybody interested in coming to the ranch, you know, just go to ecd.org and go to the uh, private uh, invitations page or whatever it is and, you know, just look at the events, what's going on. They've got so much going on here to cover all areas and it's quite a, you know, close-knit and um, open community. So, you know, it's just something that we need to replicate this around the world and that's why we've got ECD Australia and we're, we're proud to be part of that, um, connected with James and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's all happening at the moment. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Peter, so much. Um, 
Uh, for those of you that don't know about um, Peter and, and Saul, they have uh, eSETI Australia. And so it's eSETIAustralia.org, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if you go there, you can see some amazing footage of ships. They did a documentary on the trip to Australia where uh, we are hanging out with the elders there, the Aboriginal elders and Ulakai Brendan Murray, Wally and Pancake, his friend's sidekick. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was pretty amazing. But we, we saw such amazing things there, and it's all on film. And we had initiations with the Raven tribes, and and thousands of ra ravens came to join us at one event. But it was just uh, it was, it was just pretty crazy. One thing after another was unfolding on that trip, and, and uh, Peter caught it. Really well in a documentary, but uh, but anyway, you know, definitely if you get out to uh, you know Australia, look them up. You know, if you want to have a sighting and you want to have a contact, you want to find out more. And you've got some books too. You have several books, don't you, that that are on your site? Yeah, there's nine books now, and Sol's got one out, and uh, hopefully we get some more stuff. But she's got uh, meditations and a Syrian star language album as well. But We've got a large amount of documentaries for free on YouTube, so there's a lot of data and stuff people can see, um, you know, if they can't afford the books, and we still cover a lot of that in different shows and interviews. Awesome. You know, we've, uh, uh, I think uh, one thing we didn't cover, I'd love for you to talk about, I know we had two sightings together where we were both filming the same ship, and I know you, you saw the one, I didn't see the one that went behind the mountain. It was a different one. It was on a different mountain, but... You saw one as well, a really large ship in the uh, in the backfield over here oh, behind yeah, that mountain. Got, yeah, um, and then the, also talk about the other one that we both filmed that went right over the house and that yeah, half treetop yeah. level. No, it's actually um, good you brought that up because there's so much going on that um, it's, you forget so much what's going on. <laughs> but um, there was one night I took a uh, oh, I didn't take. We just went for a walk. It was Seth, um, Seth Levine, Levine and uh, Sorita. Barry, I think Michelle was with us, and we've gone down. Is it called the Pleiadian Circle? Is that what you call yeah, that section? Yeah, yeah the yeah. Pleiadian Circle. So we've gone down there, and you can see, and we know what planets are what at the moment situated here, even though everything's upside down to us. But we've been here for about a week at that time or more, so we know what's what. And um, there's this, like, to me, what it looks like, and I've got this in 4K. Uh, footage, not an infrared in colour, so you can see what it is. I still haven't gone back over it, but I'll eventually put it up once we get back to Australia. Um, it looks like a sort of maybe a rug, rugby ball or football light, and it was like giving off an orange, um, maybe yellowish charge, but it was just a light. And I'm just like, God, what the hell is that? You know, just telling everyone. So Barry and myself and, and everyone's sort of sitting there going, it's got to be a stationary light or a light on a tower and like this thing was huge it was you know if I put my fingers up it's probably at least between the size of one of my in, my index finger or two of them sort of in between that's how big it is mm. and um coming to talk to you and that like th there's nothing up there mm -mm. It, like, it, it looked like it, it was looked above like, the hill um, too it was the same sort of color as um like Mars but it was like Mars was in the sky it wasn't it was in town city on a mountain. No, but you can see all that at and the same time. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. And it was like probably three or four times bigger than that. Like it was pretty massive. Oh, it was bigger than that. Yeah. It was, yeah, it's a good size. And um, it, it was bigger than like what car lights or house light would be on the mountain. Yeah. Like I did, right at the tip. Yeah, I can't explain. Like it's mm -hmm. a really good size. And then um, you and me, I think, was it just, it was just you and me out there, wasn't it? I think. Yeah. It was just yeah. you and me out there. And we're at the front of James's Tower on the Field of Dreams there. And. We've just had this light come in from, God, what, is that the west? Over yeah, there? the west. The yeah. west, basically over this hall here and it was going east and it was just down low. So James has got that, like it was really, really low. So um, James has got that with his brand new Gen 3 white phosphorus, mm -hmm. amazing infrared camera and I've just got it with my normal $200 supermarket camera <laughs> infrared that I've got that actually does a pretty decent job. It does, it does. But really I've got good. a lot of footage on. So, um, but we both, you know, to, to say that as well, like what we've done this trip and it's been fantastic is, you know, we've got multiple witnesses like James says and we've got two cameras filming it. Um, so, and it's a hell of a lot of footage we've got of the same objects, you know, so... And plus, you know, the, the years and years and years of history and contact here at the ranch, plus going back to Alan Hynek with Kenneth Arnold's sighting where the, 
Crafts uh, went on the slopes of Mount Adams. So, you know, there's a huge documented contact here and people just need to look at the evidence. But they were amazing experiences to have. So mm. um, good, decent-sized crafts. It's not just these little balls of light. These were down low and, and pretty big. Now, they were cutting the trees in about half, weren't they? I mean, that that one that was when we were filming it, it went behind some of the bigger trees and it was like about half. Oh, yeah. Down, you know. Of the pine trees. Yeah, yeah the yeah. big pine trees. It was like half... Uh, and uh, you know, there's no possible way that could be anything other than than you know, a ship. Basically, it had no running lights. Oh, it, it blinked no, out. It didn't go yeah. down the other end oh, of yeah. the tree. Remember it went that? behind this one tree, and we're waiting for it to come out the other side, and it just was gone. Yeah. It just vanished. Completely gone. You know? So uh, you know that that one's hard to wrap your head around as being anything other than than some kind of a. We don't call them UFOs here. We call them IFOs because we know who's on them, <laughs> and uh, and we've been having contact with these beings for what thirty years now. I know you guys have had contact most of your life. Yeah. And uh, uh, and so it's it's just like you know it's it's at that point now where we're wondering when when are they going to. Uh, get over this, uh, keeping it in the past, keeping it far away, and uh, and not recognize the fact that there are people that are having contact now and not putting it 25 years in the future like NASA does, saying, oh, we're going to have contact in 25 years. Like, where have you been? You know, we've had <laughs> contact for 30 years already here. But, uh, you know, when you when you say exactly when and where the ships are going to appear, and they do appear right on time in an exact location where you say they're going to appear, and you do it redundantly on like, like CBS and Paranormal State and, and uh, you know, specials, at what point, you know, do they have to drop this old program and, and realize that contact has already happened? It's been going on for quite some time. And uh, I'd like to get your, your take on that, too, as well. Yeah, it's just um, it just comes to the point where, like I've said to people, you know, I've said it a heap of times now. Do we need the government to tell us that there's a magpie or a bird on your front lawn? Do you need to to ring them up and get that confirmation? Now we've got the evidence, we've got the people. There's so many different types of and forms of evidence, footage, witnesses from all walks of life. Like here, you've had people from all walks of life in the military and very high-ranking positions in all different areas witness this stuff. So. It's just get to the point now where we've just got to go on to the next step, and that's what the ESETI um, brand does, basically, is, mm -hmm. is set it up so we can replicate this around the world, or you have, under what you've started 30-plus years ago, and it's time to start dealing with the health technologies, the free energy, the, um, the spiritual aspect, and the contact uh, aspect. So this is what we, I guess we need to concentrate on now and, and be the leaders of and pave the way which you have started and, um, you know, it's just for, pe you know, people to catch up, I guess, and, and and deal with it that way because it's, you know, like you said, we know what they are, but we've just got to stop living in the past and just and look at the future and deal with that. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, the um, one thing I've noticed too is that, you know, we... We've talked a lot about this, and it's something that needs to be addressed. You know, there is planned opposition, and they're taking over the, you know, the key, key positions in ufology, unfortunately. And then there are the shills in there, and that's their job, to create disinformation and control the information. Mm. And, uh, and I'm just saying over and over again, it, it's, it's really time for us to use discernment, take a good, hard look at, at the people at the top, you know, and, and just... Ask yourself the important questions. You know, does this empower you as an in individual to have your own contact? Is this going to put it right here in the now? You know, is this um, helping you to, to evolve and make your own spiritual connection with God, Creator, Source, whatever you want to call it? Um, you know, how is this impacting you, and how is it affecting the planet? You know, is and and you know these people that do these things and they have these massive fund drives and things like that, they, they go and suck up all the available funds mm. out there. All this money is going to them. And if you knew about their personal lives and who they really are and who they work for and who they, they you know, dance around arm in arm with, uh, you would be shocked and you'd probably want your money back. But, um, you know, I've just seen over and over people dropping names, you know, in the UFO community, you know, Rockefeller, Clinton, this, that, you know. 
how how they're buddy buddies with all these people. Well, that doesn't establish character. As a matter of fact, it does exactly the opposite. And I've seen people make huge amounts of money, and then their whole staff quit when they found out where the money went. You know, mm-hmm. so so uh, it's it's something that needs to be addressed. You know, it, there is a lot of nonsense going on there. It needs to be dealt with. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that. If you expect these people to be your liaison, your ambassador for the ET contact, um, you've totally given away your power. It's not going to happen. The the benevolent ETs are not going to have anything to do with these people. But in fact, the negative ETs are going to have everything to do with these people. So it's very important. It's like the mind in which you seek is the mind in which you connect. And if you're not, you know, living a life in service and you're not focused on love and joy and bliss and empowering others, uh, other beings will come in and and take over that space and uh, become part of that program. So it's not only, you know, the name dropping and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, it's not always good. You know, when people, you know, say certain names and, and something just came up recently and I think it's something we probably should cover. I don't want to really bash anybody, but uh, and this is from his own admission, but Simon Parks just came out and apologized for uh, a lot of the things that happened that he was being influenced by draconians and a lot of uh, things came out of that, you know, which is, and we've been saying that for a long time, you know, like, and, and I was very concerned about this because I had a lot of people show up uh, that that we were doing counseling with and clearings with, and they they had implants, they had cords, they had possessive type entities, reptilians, grays, all these things happening to them. Some of them getting very sick, very ill. A lot of things were happening, and it was tied into some of these energies. So uh, I know you had some experiences. I don't know if you want to cover that, but you had experiences along the same lines. I won't say too much, but I will say I've had like 10 or more clients um, reporting problems with him, that they went to him as clients. Mm -hmm. And so um, he's somebody nearly half his age having to do the clean-up work and what you've got to ask yourself when you see situations like that, and look, we've got to have love, non-judgment and compassion for everyone, including Simon, and I don't know what he's going through, but at the same time, um, you've just got to look at the track record with a few things in terms of if you're out there to help people and you can't even deal with your own crap and you're getting money off people... You know, that's a big problem and, you know, people are going to probably have a problem with what I'm about to say but I said it the other day at the conference in front of so many people and nearly everyone agreed was that, I'm sorry to say, 90% of the UFO community and the spiritual field have got problems. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, I'm young but I'll put everything on the line and I don't want other experiences to go through the trouble that I have in terms of trying to get help, um, resources. And it's not to bash people. This is just to put things on the on the line. And again, I've got nothing but love and compassion. I don't. I can't judge these people, but I've got to tell it like it is, because if we're going to do diplomacy on a universal level, we've got to be real. Because the beings we're dealing with are transparent, and we're transparent. Once we reach to their occasion, we can see their stuff, and they can see ours. Mm-hmm. And so, if you're coming from a lo- place of love and non-judgment. And compassion. These guys don't judge as well. Those that are in line with the awakening and healing of humanity process, as you say, they don't judge. Um, they know that we're having the human experience and we're going through a lot right now. So I think we just got to have um, love for each other and come back to the heart. But you know, if people got a problem with what I've just said, you know, I'm sorry, but I've I've got to tell it like it is because I'd be doing an injustice to you, and it would be irresponsible of me if I just didn't tell it like it is. Mm-hmm. Do you want to comment on that? <laughs> no. Yeah, I wanted to comment a little further on that. It, it is so important. We have a responsibility, and and this has always tweaked me because I don't I don't want to judge and condemn anybody or, or badmouth anybody. But at the same time, we have a responsibility, especially to the newbies and the people that are just stepping into this field, and they go there with just you know just totally loving heart and open mind and. And just get slammed by these other energies and they allow things into their fields and they create all kinds of problems and things of that nature. And there there are people out there that aren't doing any kind of protection work. They aren't creating sacred space. They say there are no negative ETs. There, there's nothing to worry about. And I hate to say it, that's one of the most irresponsible things I've ever heard. And so it, it does need to be dealt with. You know, this does need to be dealt with. It does need to be talked about. 
And there are techniques, and we'll send you the techniques. Ask us for them. We'll show you how to heal unseen negative influences, how to create sacred space. I've written books on this, too. You know, Reunion Resource, Becoming Gods. All that talks about these things. And they also talk about exactly what's unfolding now. Yeah, people are shocked when they read these books. And they go, when did you write these? And I said, in 82. <laughs> and they go, oh, my God, <laughs> it's unfolding right now. And I said, exactly. You know, so... You know, to me, watching this unfold for over 30 years, after a while, I'm just going, boy, are we going to get it? You know, are we going to get through this or not? But it is extremely irresponsible to open up to anything that comes. Uh, you know, it's almost like playing with Ouija boards. You know, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, not, it's not a game. It's not a toy. You know, if you don't want, know what you're doing, you're going to get in big trouble. And even knowing what I know and all the extensive training I've had in healing unseen negative influences, I don't play with them. You know, I, they, they just have some weird energy attached to them that I just don't like to dig into that thing. I've had some cool experiences. I've gone to some sessions and they're really cool. I had some really ugly experiences with the Ouija board. So, again, if you don't heal unseen negative influences, you don't have, know how to stand in your own self-authority and use discernment, you shouldn't go there. And it's the same thing. And I don't want to create fear in people, but there are certain tools and techniques we need if we are going to be going into these other planes and dimensions and experiencing them. And uh, we have a saying here, just because you're an ET doesn't mean you're benevolent, and just because you're dead doesn't mean you're enlightened. You know, <laughs> So it's very important that there are certain beings out there that we need to pay attention to. You know, there's faker spirits, there's beings that'll tell you, you know, they're Jesus. There's, there's, and they'll tell you you're Jesus. You know, it's like, I mean, we get about two or three a year people coming up here that actually the spirits told them that they were Jesus and their mother Mary is guiding them here, and and I'm supposed to turn the keys over to them. You know, and uh, I said, okay, I didn't get the memo. You know, but uh, maybe we need to sit down and talk about this. But. Uh, you know, it's we need to be. It's really important to realize anything that's creating separation and division uh, is is and and uh, it's hard to explain. But if if they're flattering you and telling you you're the chosen one and that you're separate from the whole, uh, then you need to find and you know another guide or another connection. And the faker spirits do that. They get you through flattery. And there are people out there that think they're the Messiah. They think they're the chosen one. They think here, they're here to, uh, you know, turn this world around, and, and they're the go-to, you know. And and, uh, and actually, the reptilians are the ones telling them this stuff, you know, <laughs> or the faker spirits. And so it, it's we really need to pay attention to, you know, how the people act off the stage, even on stage, you know. And when they do workshops, watch what happens. Is it militaristic? You know, is there a lot of love and joy and freedom? Do they honor you? Um, is it equal? You know, look at all these indicators. And if it's not happening there, you know, bail, get out of there. And if they're charging you thousands of dollars to go to these workshops, you know, again, you know, grab your wallet and run. So I do understand, you know, we do need to function down here. We do need to eat. We do need to pay bills, you know, and there's nothing wrong with making, you know, some money at this. And, and because you are putting your time and energy into this where you could be out doing something else. So, so that is, you know, but let's keep it, you know, in some kind of a sane manner, you know, that uh, uh, I just don't see paying thousands and thousands of dollars to go and hook up with a bunch of reptilians is, is, is really a good idea. So, uh I've probably gone a little further than I wanted to on that, but <laughs> I'm going to see if Barry has anything to chime in on that. Uh, thank you. And again, thank you for having me here. Um, I would I would say that since I've been seeing um, it's a lot of ego going on in this field right now, and I'm unknown in most ways. I don't have any wolf tickets to really sell anyone, but uh, I, see, I see so many people that are thriving on ego, and when you talk to them, try to even compare the research, they're so busy slamming each other to gratify themselves that the message often gets lost. So um, I'll kind of leave it there and just uh, what Peter had said, a lot of people in the field right now are confused. And I'm noticing too, the great researchers that are stepping forward, <laughs> they're not experiencers or they're listening to people like us here and drawing things together and reading a bunch of books. And I could sit here right now and, you know, 
kind of um, tell more stories, uh, tall stories that would uh, intrigue people, but that takes away from the genuineness of what I'm saying and what I've experienced. I don't need to be talking on things I've not experienced, which is far enough that I'm going to have problems with that. So uh, <laughs> I'll kind of leave it there and uh, say that anyone that comes out to the ranch here, it's invited out here, um, you're going to deal with, I think, after three days, the traumas you might have come up. So it's not just about seeing ships. It's about dealing with your own personal trauma. And the land here kind of helps you to heal. So anyone that's not really willing to confront their own trauma and their own ill doings probably won't want to stay out here very long and probably can't. So I'll just say that along with all the other paranormal things that happen out here. Um, the main factor is healing. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Barry. Um, yeah, there's been uh, some phenomenal things happen here. And I always tell people, you know, when you engage this higher consciousness and energy, there's something that happens. One is that when you crack that door and this higher consciousness and energy comes in, all the lower consciousness and energy needs to go out. So it's this very simple term. It's called garbage in, garbage out, you know. And so our light in, garbage out. So when the light comes in, you know, the garbage has to go out because it's all about frequency. So the love and joy and bliss are the highest frequencies in service to others. And, you know, the ego and, and the self-centered stuff and the, you know, the greed and the separation game, all that stuff. You know, fear and guilt, which is taught by a lot of religions and things, it just, it just doesn't, it can't exist in the same vessel. So it has to be released. And that's what happens here. You know, things come up and it doesn't matter how right you think you are or how self-righteous you think you are. It's your come from, you know, do you have a charge in this? You know, where are you coming from? And, you know, are you focused on love and joy and compassion and understanding and trying to deal with things on that level? You know, are you or did you grab your sword and you're, you want to hack off some heads? You know, it's like we have to really look at our come from and see where we're coming from. And uh, take it to the next level to get through these times. And, and we are going to be pushed to do that. So it is going to be some, some very challenging times we're going through. The, when the 11th dimensional ships showed up, the one message they told me was game on. you know. And so with their frequencies and their consciousness and energy and their technologies, that we're going to see an end to tyranny very quickly. And it's going to implode in on itself. It's not frequency specific to where the earth is evolving to, where she's being lifted to, and we can all be a part of that lifting, and all we got to do is drop the baggage and start aligning ourselves with unity consciousness, you know, and working together. You know, I don't care if you're blue, pink, green, purple, you know, whatever color you are, it doesn't matter. We have to transcend all culture and religious boundaries and get into unity consciousness. And, you know, these meat sacks or these earth suits we're wearing, are not that important, you know, they're cool, you know, they're cool for hanging out down here, we do need the ego to function down here a little bit, but, you know, it shouldn't be the master, it shouldn't be calling all the shots, but, uh, you know, with that said, uh, I just wanted to really thank, you know, a lot of people that have come out to the ranch and have helped out the ranch, and my blessings go out to those who have come and those who have gone, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, I, I have nothing but love for all these people. Uh, but I also have, you know, it, it's sad, but sometimes, you know, we, we are going to be forced to set boundaries and we're going to be forced to be the enforcer, which, which we all hate. And we're all going to be challenged in the days to come to, to actually love ourselves enough to set some boundaries and to totally hold true to universal law and unity consciousness to get through these times. And, and I think if we do that and we hold our leadership to these principles, we will get through these times. And, and you don't have to worry about certain individuals running for president because uh, they aren't going to make it. <laughs> the energies are coming in too hot and heavy, and you cannot carry that much baggage, that much karma, and, and uh, rise to the top here because it's, it's shortly the rug is going to be pulled underneath that. All of that because the grid no longer supports it. So... Um, I think we've got uh, a few minutes left here. I wanted to uh, see if Albert wants to add anything to that. Do you have anything to be in here at the ranch? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so since I've been here for almost four months, and uh, I can definitely attest to the way the energy works. And 
bringing up your stuff and, and dealing with whatever it is one needs to deal with. Um, it's awesome being here. It's beautiful being here, but it is challenging because of that. Um, so with that, you know, seeing the ships and, and, and stuff, seeing the mountain light up is awesome. But another awesome thing about being here is um, the inner work and, and the connections happening within. Um, and there's a lot of that to be had here and a lot of energy in, in, and uh, the way James and the crew, um, you know, work to bring in the beings and, and hold the light um, is uh, just just as awesome as seeing all that stuff in the sky. Um, but it is about, like like we're saying, meeting them halfway. And I, some people come with some kind of sense of entitlement, like they're going to put on some kind of show or, you know, do tricks <laughs> in the sky for us. But um, those nights, those people typically um, are let down and, and don't see much. But like last night, um, you know, we have a great group here and it, it was – it was quite cloudy, except this one patch of sky um, seemed to open up in like, what was it, like 25 ships yeah. flew by. And I think that has a lot to do with the intent and where everyone's at. Um, and that's, I, you know, I'm still sort of young in my awakening or whatever you want to call it. But um, that's where I think contact happens is when you have that that intent and that heart space and you're coming mm -hmm. from that. So, um, I would say for anyone who's interested in coming, checking out the ranch, um, just try to lay any ex expectations aside and just have an open heart and open mind and, uh, just, just, you know, be ready to, uh, have some fun. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 We have a saying here, if it's not fun, it's not sustainable, you know, so uh, if we're not having fun, we need to take a walk, <laughs> go, go do something else for a little while. But uh, we're also, uh, I coming up to the end of the hour here, we just got, you know, a couple minutes left. So uh, on that note, I wanted to, so let's go down at the other end. So Peter and Saul, what's the best way for people to, get, to find out more about your work and get a hold of you? Um, so probably going to eSETIAustralia.org. Uh, that's got information for both of us. Uh, my website is sorrytopsychicreadings.com and Pete's is petermaxwellslattery.com. But if you just Google our names, um, Sorita or Peter UFO, you'll find the information for both of us. And uh, Barry, I know you've got a website too. Actually, you can reach me on both Facebook or you can try uh, YouTube, uh, type in Barry Littleton and UFOs and a bunch of weird stuff will come up. <laughs> about about right. 60 videos. <laughs> all right. And uh, we're going to have all this footage up on our sites, too. We'll have it up on the on all of our sites, basically. So we'll have ESETI Stargate up. And we've got some amazing events uh, coming up, too. We've got Laura Eisenhower uh, coming up. We've got e t e, uh, uh, Tashina. Uh, actually, she's a, a wisdom keeper. She lives on the Hopi Reservation coming up to do a self-mastery class. And uh, we've got, uh, what else we have? We have Winston's route coming up. Uh, uh, he's going to do a major uh, removing commercial karma workshop, which is going to be great. And that's uh, September, I guess, uh, 1st through the 5th. And then uh, I guess her, uh, boy, the fold on this, I can't even read it, but uh, I guess it's September. When is Laura Eisenhower's? September 29th? I believe. But anyway, you can go to eSETI.org and uh, check it out or go to private invitations, uh, eSETI.com, and uh, to find out more about the information. So uh, I guess we're going to be signing off here. So anyway, this is uh, James Gillen and the crew here yeah. uh, signing off from eSETI, broadcasting live. Have a great evening. Stay in the heart. Watch the skies. And use discernment. You're going to need it in the days to come. Anyway, have a great evening.